the challenge of the Yukon. Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserve law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his Wonder Dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. In the small frame building that was Deauville City's jail, Sergeant Preston stood facing a prisoner who shrugged his shoulders unconcernedly as the Mountie spoke. It'll go a lot easier on you if you choose to play ball with the law. Save your breath, Mountie. I ain't talking. I'm giving you a choice between hanging and life. We've already got one murder on you, the one you pulled with your gang when you robbed the Hudson Bay Post. <laughs> I'll never hang. That's for a miner's jury to decide. Maybe. Well, suit yourself, MacDonald. Thanks. That's what I aim to do. Bring it over. You're slated to hang anyway. We'll catch up with the rest of the gang eventually, but if we do it with your help, I can promise you... You don't need be... to promise me nothing. What I said before still goes. If it wasn't for you and that blasted dog of yours, I wouldn't be in here. You're very generous with your praise. <laughs> yeah? But I'll give you a tip, see? I ain't only not gonna hang, but I'll never even face a jury. Because I won't be in here that long, Mounty. You seem mighty confident, MacDonald, but your luck's about run out. <laughs> That's what you think. From where I'd sit, I'd say you're the one that's about run out of luck. And if you stick around long enough, you'll see what I mean. It was late that night. Sergeant Preston walked slowly through the town, King, the great Malamute, following close on his master's heels. Approaching the jail, the Mountie saw the dim outlines of a sled pulling away from the building. Fella. Halt! Halt those dogs! No, boy, you stay out of the line of fire. Who did this? What do I see if you're badly Sergeant Preston. Here, let me help you, Sandy. Ain't, ain't no use. I, I, I guess they got me. But I filled McDonald with a taste of lead before he... So that's it, huh? I got away from McDonald. Yeah. There was two of them. Got the gun on me and took the keys. When they was getting set to mush, I reached for my gun. Take it easy, fellow. No, no. I want to tell you. Two of them come for him, see? McDonald... He ain't going to last long. I... Uh... Sandy. <laughs> yes, King, this is one more murder the Winslow gang has to answer for, and I'm going to see that they do. It was late afternoon of the next day, and on the trail, miles north of Deauville City. How about make him camp here, Wynn? All right. How are you, Husky? How up there? What's the matter, Charlie? Uh, nothing. I just got a feeling I won't be mushing any further with you. That's all. Hey, you help him from the sled, Kyla. I'll unharness the dog. Oh, sure. Here, come on. All right, you must. Oh. Put the hide down. Uh. Sit down there, Charlie. Uh. There you go. I'd have been better off rotting in that jail. At least I'd have had my choice of living or dying. Well, what's eating you now? I'll get a fire going. You'll be all right. Ain't no fire going to make no difference to me. My luck's running out, he said. Oh, you're talking out of your head, Charlie. Any more of that, uh, that dry wood left? Yeah, it's on the sled. My luck started running out when I bumped into him. 
Him and that dog of his. If I'd have had any sense, I'd have listened to him. Hey, what's this talk about luck? You're on top of the world and you don't know it. With a cut you got coming to you, you ought to... Top of the world. Thanks to that Mountie, I'll never see the cut. Yeah, you got away from the mound. Yeah, sure. You came back for me. Well, sure we did. So what are you yapping about? You came back for me because you had to. You're not fooling me, honey, Winslow. Well, I, never I, mind, I, we'll I, let him alone. He doesn't know what he's saying. Uh, you knew that if you'd have left me there, I'd have talked. Take it easy, Charlie. <laughs> didn't want that, did you? I would have, too. Saved my neck. That's what I should have done. Maybe them slugs the guard threw into you didn't do the trick. But I'll put one in them. You don't have will. to bother. Let him alone. What's wrong with you? You're gone soft. Hey. Maybe he means something to you now. Don't huh? be a fool. He won't last long. Mounties. I hate him. Next one you meet. Drop him for me, when <laughs> And if you ever meet Preston in that mud of his, King, he calls him. Oh, King, huh? Poison. Both of them. <laughs> that dog's like nothing in the Yukon. He can do the work of a whole pack of huskies. You ought to see him with Preston. Tame, quiet. But he's smart. Yeah, he's got that Mountie on the brain. On the brain, huh? Sure, I got him on the brain. And you better hope for your sake. You don't ever get him on yours. He's... He's poison. Uh, don't worry. If Preston and me ever meet, there's only going to be one of us walk away. <laughs> and it won't be the Mountie. Several days passed. Signs of the early darkness were beginning to cross the northern skies as Carla Peters noticed a campfire ahead on the trail. Why not sure that campfire, Wynn? We might as well. I don't know if I want to take any chance. We'll need another sled, won't we? To carry the stuff from the cave? <laughs> Smart girl. That's right. Ho, oh, you huskies. Ho oh, there. Ho oh, there. Mind if we share your campfire, stranger? Put this off. Uh, pleasant fella, ain't he? <laughs> Come on. Sergeant Preston sat by the campfire, the great Malamute King in the snow beside him. With apparent unconcern, the Mountie studied the newcomers. He noticed that the eyes of the man were the cold, merciless blue that might be a killer's. As the two men measured each other, there was an electric tension in the air. Winslow had no way of knowing that the man coolly facing him was a Mountie, for the policeman's heavy mackinaw covered his tunic. Silently, they ate a cold dinner, and then... Where are you heading for... A number of places. Oh. <laughs> uh, been on the trail long? Long enough. You, uh, you don't say much, do you? I didn't ask you any questions, did I? Oh, the cagey sort, huh? You don't seem to want company, mister. Maybe you're, uh, you're running away from the law? If I am, I wouldn't tell a stranger about it. Oh. Nice looking sled you got. Yeah. Matter of fact, I could use that sled. I wouldn't reach for that gun if I were you. Why not? That's why not. Well, <laughs> he's a lot faster on the draw than you, Wynn. Yeah. That was mighty close, stranger. The next one will be even closer. All right. We understand each other now. You throw a letter around like somebody that had a lot of practice. Have it your way. I could use a man who knows how to keep his mouth shut. And that man could cut himself in on a very nice deal. I'm listening. What do you think, Carl? Oh, I like the looks of him. So be sure you play this straight. Wait a minute. I'm not interested in cutting in on any small deal. <laughs> Listen to him, will you? <laughs> small deal, he says. <laughs> Wait till we get to that cave. <laughs> 
It was two days later, and during those two days, Carla Peters had turned her attention to the man that she knew only as Bill. Her interest in him and the man's indifference to her were not unnoticed by Winslow. The gunman's suspicious jealousy overshadowed his original impression of the newcomer, and Preston, in his masquerade, felt Winslow's eyes on him constantly. From the conversation of a man and woman, the Mountie gathered they were not far from the cave. The narrow trail edged itself against a wall. Below it was a treacherous stream rushing dizzily toward the rapids beyond. Be careful how you throw your weight on that turn ahead. Hey, you think you're talking to some chachaco? Take care of your own, Fred. I'll drag mine. Don't yourself. Well, King, old boy, as soon as we can get them with a load boat. Watch it! Hey, the sled's out of control! Carlos! Carlos falling in the water! Pull your melamute! Pull! Hey, she'll be pulled over those rapids. And I can't swim, my King! King, old boy! <laughs> Almost instantly, the great melamute dove into the icy water. The girl had not yet been caught in the current. But as she looked beyond to the spray rising from the rapids, her terror mounted, and instead of swimming, she thrashed about uselessly, struggling to keep her head above water. That's it, King! Steadily, the valiant dog cut through the water, at length reaching the girl. Carefully, he buried his fangs into her water-soaked mackinaw and prepared to pull his burden to safety. The Mountie reached for a blanket to throw about the shivering girl, and as he put it around her shoulders, he looked squarely into the muzzle of Winslow's revolver. Your dog, Billy. You saved my life. Did I... you hear what he called that dog? What? what are you driving at? Why the gun? That dog's name's King. The name mean anything to you, Carla? King? Yeah. Charlie mentioned him before he died. King and Preston. Reach, Mountie. What? Then Bill is Sergeant Preston. That's it, baby. Sure, I should have known it. Sergeant William Preston. <laughs> well, you played your part well. I can pretty near guess what your plans were, too. Can you? Once you got inside the cave, you'd have us with the loot. And we'd go back to town in handcuffs. That's a pretty accurate guess, Winslow. And I'll have to hand it to you. You sure had me fooled. Till I heard you call a dog by name. And all this time you've been saying fella. When you said king, he was in the water like a shot out of a gun. Well, he's just as smart as Charlie said he was. But that slip's going to cost you your life, Mountie. He, he called him by name when he ordered the dog into the water to save me. Quiet, yeah. boy, boy. You're calling the deal now, Winslow. That's right, and you're going out of it on this side. Please, no. That dog saved my life. I won't let you. Put that gun away. Get away from me. No, no, I won't. Put that away. Put that away. He saved my life. All right, Winslow. All right, got my gun. All right. I'll drop you before you can pull that no, trigger. Stop that. Carla. 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 Miss Peters. Don't raise that gun, Winslow. Drop it. Carla. Carla. You win, Monty. There's only one of the Winslow gang left. Well, maybe it's better that way. You're under arrest, Winslow. <laughs> yes, King, the case is closed. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios.